Welcome to Working Title. I'm Ryan Fring with The Bit Life Show. On today's show, we have John Klein, cinematographer. What is the stupid? I do business. I, is that bad? <laughs> An entrepreneur who owns a local production rental house, actually in Milwaukee. We use a lot of their gear uh, for the Princess Night. We talk to him about how he got into cinematography, what he does, what he likes. Uh, We get a little bit geeky about uh, some of the technical stuff. We have a lot of great stories uh, about cinematography, being in the industry, and uh, doing great stuff. Let's do it. (laughs) Jeff, you got to make this good. So much for coming and chatting. Um, You are a, a skilled laborer. Are you going to introduce them? Or no? Yeah, I, I guess we haven't said it. Uh, welcome to John Klein, a cinematographer. Do you, do you have other things that you like to do, or are you, are you just a cinematographer? Is that kind of how you put yourself out there? I, that's the first, when I shake hands, that's the yeah. first place I go. Okay. Um, I'm trying to work the entrepreneur angle, too. Oh, really? Um, and as you guys are, too, I'm, you know, but yeah. uh, starting a business, uh, it's been open for two years as of about right now. Mm. So Congratulations. Thank you. How old is your business? Uh, well, we're about eight, eight years old, but three years going like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's always how it is. And just, yeah, just running. Actually, I stumbled across your location uh, a couple weeks ago. My wife had a wedding thing because uh, she does wedding gowns in Milwaukee. And we were right down there. What's that street? Um, Broadway? Uh, yeah. We were right, on, right off of Broadway. And I was walking around because I wasn't going to do the wedding thing. So I was walking around looking for a bar. And I came across and right on the window there was MKE Productions. Or rentals, MKE a, production rental. Yes. Yeah, it's both. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, So that's a that's a fantastic location there, like right in the heart of the city. It is. Yeah, we're surrounded by creatives, which is a good place to be. Now is that is that expensive? It seems like that could be like a very high desired spot. It was terrifying signing the lease. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was right on the edge. It was above what I was looking for, but it also had a lot we could grow into Mm -hmm. so and one of the things entrepreneurs do do is take risks that's right so Mm -hmm. that's right and what what made you want to get into that you know there's a what american camera in milwaukee and i'm sure there's other but uh what what made you want to get into the rental business i felt like there was nobody serving me you know so Mm -hmm. we had um milwaukee had a really good base of of where to start you know somebody had a red epic and you could get um amazing cinema lenses and you could get any number you know mitchell mount tripods and everything but if what you wanted to do was take out a 5d or a t3i or a black magic camera and you Mm -hmm. need a shoulder rig or a slider dolly Mm -hmm. or all the stuff that everybody's using now like there it wasn't there sure and i just had it all in my closet anyway (laughs) so i thought rather than letting my friends use it for free i should charge (laughs) them for it that yeah and so then did that did that uh, was that kind of organic that you started charging them or did you right away just come up with a bit? Bu- this is a business. I got to do the business. What what was the order? I spent like a year and a half <clears throat> waiting just sort of like maybe maybe this person will be my business partner or maybe this will be the right time or maybe and I shouldn't have. <clears throat> that was a big mistake. Um, some people, you know, if you find a good business partner, awesome. But if you don't, like you just have to do it. Mm-hmm. So eventually I just got the guts um I got married and mm-hmm. that sort of helped to have somebody in my life kick me in the butt yeah yeah basis. right right so uh yeah ultimately I just one day I was like we're gonna open April 1st and it's official and incorporated and made it real <laughs> nice. Nice. and then you just have to make it happen absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah. one day at a time yeah that's great we always talk about it too like we have very d- different personalities but just because there are two of us it's been such a help when we've been figuring things out well how do we do this why do we do that you know how do you know here's a new thing that we have to come up with an answer for i have this idea well did you think about this you know you can bounce it off you can talk through it and you know there hasn't been a time where we haven't benefited from that you know we certainly argue like a married couple as well (laughs) it's it's a system of checks and balances that's right (laughs) it's you know i think what it what it has meant for us is i i feel like you know some more stability for us but um, probably a little bit slower because you know when you when mm-hmm. you are doing your a sole proprietorship you just all right make the decision start doing that mm-hmm. you know versus like 
Well, we got to bounce it around a little while and see what we land on. But uh, yeah, yeah, but the back burner feels so much further back when you're not working on something. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you can have things going right. that are like still. Right. You can turn away and like it keeps moving. Right, which right. You don't always have. There's also somebody to like hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I have to do taxes and what a pain in the butt. <laughs> and like I'm not the kind of guy who's going to sit down before April 14th and yeah, do my taxes. Yeah. <laughs> And so it's like, but if you have somebody in the business to sort of say like, you know, it's late February. Did mm-hmm. we do that yet? I mean, this is overdue. This is going to be due soon. Like yeah. be accountable to somebody other than yourself. I think right. is worth a lot. Now, are you, are you kind of financially mind minded and very organized like that? Or does she bring a Com- lot of that? Completely or? not. Completely not. <laughs> completely not. Um, I wish I had a business partner who enjoyed the money. <laughs> I enjoy meeting with people. I enjoy talking about movies. Mm -hmm. I enjoy helping people have like an awesome shoot or, you know, we do a lot of event stuff too. So Mm -hmm. helping them with like the lighting for their event or their AV stuff. Um, but the, the nitty gritty, like making sure we make money. That's boring. (laughs) Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't need that. So is there still money left? That's good. (laughs) We must be doing all right. Can I afford this new thing that I want that will probably help me? No, it'll help me. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Okay, great. That's completely how I am to myself. And (laughs) it's very difficult when I always say yes. Yeah. (laughs) So what is, and and what's your wife's name? Anna. Anna. And what is, what does she do a lot of? It sounds like she, she kind of helps you from that angle, but what is, what are her strengths and how does she kind of compliment you in the business? Um, she's the silent partner. She's (laughs) very, uh, supportive. I can come home and complain but she doesn't do much work uh, in the office okay she's mostly just there to uh make sure you don't go crazy yeah yeah absolutely yeah and especially before i had employees on it okay uh, it's nice to just say like is is this insane is, <laughs> is this person's expectation reasonable mm-hmm. you know yeah so you said you have employees what uh tell me about that what's that like um, I'm sure you know too. It's mm-hmm. terrifying. And the first you want me to go. That one. Yeah. That <laughs> later. <laughs> later. We can talk right, about Max, you, you and I have yeah. to go. <laughs> um, the first hour of your first employee in at least in Wisconsin is like what, like three thousand dollars or something. <laughs> I mean, it's so much of your time. You got to sit down right. and, and figure out like, okay, so now there's payroll, right? All this compliance business. Mm-hmm. Um, you're like, oh, I should probably put that sign on the wall. Yeah, I but mean, it, and but it might end up in the drawer. Just so you don't have to until you have like eight employees or something. But, but like you, all of these rules and then unemployment insurance and all this other stuff. And it's like, you're expected to have that all in line on Mm -hmm. day one when they show up. Mm -hmm. But it's not like somebody from the government stopped by and said, Hey, I'm your compliance advisor. And it's not easy. Yeah. They don't make it easy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it's terrifying. Yeah. (laughs) And then you get the first one down and it's not nearly as bad. And now, uh, do you have, are they all the same, uh, same type of employee or any of them starting to manage the others now, you know, having them take care of things or, or where well, are they at? Alyssa's our shop manager. Oh, okay. So she's do she's full time in the shop, which is great because oh, I nice. don't have to deal with any of the day to day. Um, but it's always funny cause people call me anyway and say like, Hey, is that camera available? And I, right. I'm, I just play stupid every time. Like, mm-hmm. how would I know? Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, Oh, did you call the office? Oh, you haven't yet? Oh, Interesting. <laughs> like, like John's gotten really passive aggressive. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, did you call the office? I try to be passive passive, but it doesn't always work. I like it. Um, so she's on, but she's hourly. And then everybody else is contract so far. So mm-hmm. kind of as needed. Um, mm-hmm. We are picking up an intern for the summer too. Yes. A paid internship. Although yes. I, if this goes to air not very soon it probably will be too late to apply oh wow. so yeah we this will be probably a month and a half out mm-hmm. wow that's like the distant future for me yeah, yeah that's the f- yeah that's far you know i but the other thing that's kind of exciting about like growing your team and adding employees is um it's that i that whole idea of surrounding yourself you know you were saying like you don't really like the the business you know money end of things but that idea of surrounding yourself with people who are talented mm-hmm. You know, and it's kind of exciting to see what starts happening with the team when it's like, okay, I've been doing things for a while, but now that we have a team of people around us and we're getting together and working on projects together, it's kind of like, oh, that's just, this is kind of cool. This is, you know, people are, you know, starting to contribute other ideas that we didn't think of or doing other things. And, you know, that's, that's part of it to me that's been cool to see is that surrounding ourselves with talented people. Thanks, sure. John. 
Yeah, for sure. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> to be clear, to be clear. Yeah. yeah, there's a few people in that room who in this room who's talking about, but we won't we won't mention who those are. It's probably not me though. Where's Jeff? Um, so then then that gives you more time to do what you what you love. It's to be behind the camera. Absolutely, I, I, I presume. So tell me more about that. How did you how did you get into cinematography and shooting and all that jazz. Hmm. I remember in high school, I got a camera as a gift, like an old film camera. Oh, wow. And not video, not yeah. moving pictures, still pictures. Yeah. And uh, I took a ton. I was like the shutter bug. That's the term they used back then. Mm. Now we call them like cell phone users or something. Right? <laughs> but um, Tweens. But, yeah. Tweens. Who invade your privacy, I think. Is, and really, yeah. they because they put the lens on the other side of the camera, they just use it backwards the whole time. <laughs> They have a stick for that now. Did you see that? Do you rent the stick, the selfie stick? I would if I could make money on it. You're like, we can put a red on a selfie stick. That's what we <laughs> offer. No one else offers that. But I kind of thought that, you know, I needed to do something practical with my life, hmm. you know, because nobody makes money with pictures. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's silly. Yeah. So Or I, being artistic. It's terrible. So I went off thinking like I'll be a, a business guy, I'll do something in business, and then got lost and burned out because I didn't actually enjoy it. <laughs> um, and then about 2004 or so, um, I was talking with a friend, and our um, one of our creative outlets had always been music, mm -hmm. and that had been destroyed in the flood. We lost a bunch of musical instruments and stuff. So. Fortunately, we were both creative guys and we were looking to go in a different direction anyway. So we said, let's, uh, let's try something else. Let's make a short film. Oh, wow. So we took our insurance settlement money from our guitars being covered in sewage mm -hmm. and turned it into a Canon GL2. Oh. It, uh, it got me excited about it and mm -hmm. it made me aware that it might be possible to make a living doing that. Mm -hmm. So I dabbled the way that everybody does. You know, I think most guys you know, jump onto... Uh, like, oh, I'll shoot your wedding. Right. And then that, Absolutely. that means you get like three of them together. And so now you have three cameras and you're like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> and then, uh, then you realize that editing is a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. And tape's a huge pain in the butt. But everything keeps getting easier, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, so we finished that film, I think, in late 2005 or maybe 2006. Um, and I was back in school at that point for film. Mm-hmm. So I went to UW Oshkosh for the radio TV film program. Do, by the way, do you still have this film? Is this something that I you, do? That you it's share? called Six Bullets. Six Bullets. Oh, yeah, nice. It's it's, uh, it's not terrible. <laughs> that's that's saying something because I look back and I had a blast and everyone loved the stuff that I created and I'm sure you had the same thing. But but I look at some of it and I'm like, ooh, that's early stuff. That's uh, <laughs> ooh. I think I'm lucky because I was already like 24 or whatever at that oh, point. Okay. So like I'd gotten out of at least my awkward teenager. Yeah, you were more a of a bit. person yeah. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe my films were more of a person of their own. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Um, and I was director of photography, director of photography for that. So, okay. Uh, um, but I did a whole lot of editing and I mean, in any sort of indie project, right. it's that indie. You had six hats and they all sat on each other very well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, that... That made me aware, at least, that I was having fun doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I got involved in some other short films and then started saying I could do this for a job. Mm -hmm. So um, worked on, you know, you could do some crew gigs. So sometimes that means just being a production assistant or mm -hmm. a grip or whatever. And then pretty soon, you know, well, I've got a camera. I can shoot this. And, and then eventually start getting calls. So now, who did, you, who did you meet or how did you first start getting that work? Did you know people already, or did you did you put yourself out there on Craigslist, or what did you do? Yeah, Craigslist is terrible now. So <laughs> if you're if you're actually still if like if you're yeah. twenty, unless you're looking for a date, right? I or an axe murderer, <laughs> the wrong well, kind. Well, of date. They're, they're the same. It's one of the same. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not the kind of date you want to go on. Yeah, it's the one where you die. Um, I would bet that there's like two or three legitimate gigs listed on Craigslist a year, mm. um, unless you really like working for craft services and promise of a dvd <laughs> oh geez uh, for an indie film though yeah for yeah. an indie film yeah um not my kind of thing yeah so um but at the time craigslist wasn't terrible mm -hmm. um i've always had my own website up johnkline.com nice um which i think helps people understand that you take freelancing seriously if mm -hmm. you take the effort to you know have a something out there about you and you have to have a reel together and you 
you meet a lot of people, mm -hmm. you shake a lot of hands, and nine out of ten of them aren't going to remember your name next week, and that's mm -hmm. fine. You just have to keep coming around. One of my first uh, big breaks actually was here in Madison for Tilt Media. Oh, uh, and I did right. get that gig on Craigslist. Did you really? Tilt Media once hired someone on <laughs> Craigslist, and it was me. It was a success story. <laughs> the one time they did it, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember. We were talking to Rich at one point, and somehow your name came up, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's fantastic. Too bad he you know, lives in Milwaukee or moved to Milwaukee or whatever it was. Well, I, and, I live more in Chicago, actually, yeah. but who cares? Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> you know, you, you build a day rate, and you drive where you need to drive. So. Right. Um, but, yeah, that was – that was one of those where I was really excited. It gave me my first role model, actually, that shoot, because I got to mm -hmm. meet um, Rob Fisher, who is a uh, director of photography um, based in Milwaukee. Okay. But he's done, like, I've heard the name. Yeah. Bigger yeah. stuff. Like, he's done a Super Bowl spot. He's done some stuff where okay. I'm like, I mean, I think he's actually a DGA member, too. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Working with him, seeing, at the time, that was the world of, I think he had probably had an XL2 also. Really? Um, but that was in the world of ground glass adapters. Do you remember those? Mm -mm. Yeah. We, yeah. We had one. Wait, the, the gr ground blast? Ground, ground glass. glass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We, we still have it. One. Anybody want to buy one? So, oh, my God. Sell uh, it now because it's not going to no, it, value. Nobody, it's, 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 yeah, no, there's no, no value. It's holding Make, papers down or something right now. Yeah, it's about it's worth about $6, <laughs> which is, you know, like a paperweight. Some kid who got your XL2 on Craigslist for forty five dollars yeah. would love that. Right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you have the XL two or what what do we have it with? The XL H one. I still have the XHA one. Yes. And that thirty five millimeter ground glass adapter still works with it. So yeah. But you need the battery. It's so smooth. And the, <laughs> oh, oh, and the that, balance. That the was balance so is nice. Unbeatable yeah. when it's yeah. just oh. just always down. If you like, oh yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, lock your tripod because it's gonna fall. I was so excited in college when. When I could have, I think it was a laughter. Sorry. I think we have a laugh track. Actually, it was an aneurysm, a snort track. Laugh. We might have to take him to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Studio audience jerk. <laughs> I was really hoping robots were running the camera. Sure. Ooh, we were so close. Oh. John was like. So do you want to set up, because we have a, a live, uh, we, we actually have the Blackmagic studio cameras, because we do uh, live production. How, you, know, you say plural, as in like two? Three. Three? three? We've, sold our, souls, <laughs> We've sold, sold our souls, John. You want three Blackmagic studio cameras, and you're shooting yeah. this on a 5D and some... We're going to get there, but John's going to have to live switch until we can some... train one of these guys yeah. to live switch. You could probably, li I mean, you're live mixing. We you could, could we could, about that. but he's not going to be able to talk. He's like, just going to be like... Uh, I don't remember what I was, what was saying. Let me just switch the camera. <laughs> By the time you like get five minutes into the show, though, you're on total autopilot. I would totally just reach over and just <laughs> start just doing be that on too. Me, like, well, I'll, yeah, you just I'll be forget. like, "Excuse me, I'm going to interrupt you now." <laughs> yeah, they're only looking at me anyway. That's awesome. great, and yeah. we could set it so it only goes to the mic that the camera's on. I think John's perfect. inspiring us. It's yeah, I like it. Next live time. is fun. Yeah, some of, some of my favorite work's been live. Uh, I did a lot of auto racing actually. Oh, really? And that's. Uh, Local or uh, in, in Wisconsin in mostly. Or? Okay, um, but one of my good friends, Clark, has done. Uh, he runs a company called Speedcast. Okay. So every summer, racing's pretty big in the mm -hmm. Midwest, and uh, it's a very fun, very different kind of work because, you know, you get a track that's five miles long, so you really only work like fifteen seconds out of every three minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how do you? How many cameras are they attention. putting along that? Do they only have a couple, or are you trying to cover a lot? Usually, there's about. 10 give or take okay um and it'll depend on the track mm -hmm. um but then there might also be two or three more that are just like gopros kind of tucked in a corner somewhere that aren't necessarily they're taking over the world yeah. so what do you um i mean maybe you can comment on because you know you started with gl2 you know the the fixed lens or whatever and i i think i feel like the separation is maybe going away a little bit because it used to be like if you're out there in you know on the west coast working on movies like you get to play with lenses and stuff and if you were anywhere else in the midwest you had your video camera and you're shooting eng style stuff right. and it was all very like you know like, let me just, just do a zoom and you know like it was all like that and then dslrs kind of changed things and now like everything's following that so the whole idea of the ground glass and getting like nice lenses attached to the front of your GL2 or um, even GoPros, like we talked about, like the GoPros have, they have crazy rigs. They have this, you know, maybe it's like wooden camera has mm -hmm. a, has a lot mm -hmm. of stuff and you can like 
have a way to hold it and it's in there somewhere, but then they have like an adapter that goes in the front and then other lenses you can slap on the front of that, you know, and then you've got a GoPro in, inside there. There's a, somebody makes a GoPro anamorphic adapter now. Oh my gosh. I think lettuce does, I think. Oh, I do love anamorphic though. And anamorphic, it, the look and the lens, you know, like you see that in, versus a crop, you know. <laughs> so what, the difference what, is only like 80 grand. So what's that like, you know. Is and then that, aberration on the side, like so it looks can, less good. So <laughs> as, a, as a producer a who's learning cameras, what is anamorphic? Mm -hmm. Maybe some of our general audience members who it's, are listening to this oh, yeah. don't know what that means. Oh, yeah. These aren't Take it away. camera nerds yeah. listening. That's right. Home. They um, might be camera nerds, but I'm not. Well, so I'll probably listen. Humor it's me. the squeeze. So what is horizontal and vertical is no longer it, at the same oh, ratio. Okay. So you take, if you looked at anamorphic on, the reason it exists actually is because 35 millimeter film was four perforations tall, which meant that it was like four by three, just like TV was, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago. Um, but they wanted widescreen. And one of the ways that they got this was by just squishing it horizontally. Mm -hmm. um, what that does is create your lens flares that do that really cool, like stretchy thing in every Michael Bay movie ever. Mm -hmm. um, um, where it's beautiful. Like if you want to see like the coolest things ever, just look for like anamorphic, like welders or whatever, something with sparks or stars oh, or yeah. suns or what. It's just really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but it, and it looks expensive because guys in the everyday can't do it. You know, if you mm -hmm. could do it on a GoPro mm -hmm. in six months, everybody'd be sick of it. Mm -hmm. But you can't yet so mm -hmm. yeah so cool. so and then, and then again what it does is for projection and for capture there's a lens that takes this image mm -hmm. and like you're saying put you know squeezes it mm -hmm. down so then when you project it if you're projecting it from the 35 millimeter then you have to have a, an, a reverse anamorphic lens on top uh, on the projector that will then stretch Take it, it back though. out nice. and then you do get a lot of aberration mm -hmm. on the side yeah. so it'll be a little soft a little darker like mm -hmm. lots of you know people be like i want the 70 darker 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 you know because it has a certain look okay. um and it's it's interesting because it kind of fights that new trend where they're like we need a dragon sensor in here and we're gonna get 6k you know we're gonna shoot in 8k and it's gonna be so the resolution but then it, they'll come in and the, then they'll add a little bit more grit and grain and things like that which you yeah. would just get in film and, and from the okay. original film equipment okay. so Thank you. With with all the you know rigs that we can build up now, I mean, what are your thoughts on like? Um, maybe this is an obvious question, but like, do you th what do you think about the benefits of what we're able to achieve versus the complication that's added back into on the smallest little thing we're shooting like film style? We've got like different lenses you got to choose, and you've got a separate audio tracking. You got to sync it later. We're like back to like. You can you can have a flat image if you want. We're back to like a more traditional Basic. style of shooting, but we still have you know on small things you're still one guy and <laughs> running out there and trying to do it, but you don't have the luxury. But you know maybe a better look. I don't know. I think I mean everybody's talking about the playing field being level. You know the uh, the eighth grader in theory can compete with all of us because we're all on the same internet. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, they're probably doing better than we are because they're better at internet than we are. They could be. Um, <laughs> and there's, I mean, there's some that are, I have a, a buddy who's, I think, I think his son is 10 mm -hmm. and he's got hundreds of thousands of views mm -hmm. on his YouTube channel and he's 10 and he's like playing video games. No, like, he's guys, check it out. He's the guy that does it with the skateboard, like the little, like three inch oh, skateboard yeah. and his fingers. He does tricks. Yeah. And he, yeah. But that's a skill. That's pretty, you know, the world should see that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but then then you go to film school and you're like, but damn it, only twelve people have seen my movie. Yeah, <laughs> it says something. It, yeah, mine mine has passion. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it really does. I think that's something we've been given a like a good heads up on, a good reminder in our generation that it's like it doesn't matter the tools at all. Mm -hmm. Like they're just part of the palette for telling a good story. You mm -hmm. know? So I mean, and like as fun as it is to be like cinematographer and talk tech stuff. Mm. I only want to work on something that's got a good script mm -hmm. and I only want to work with a director who's going to honor the story because you get to the end and like it could be in 16k but yeah is anybody going to watch it right so yeah technology completely doesn't matter except when it does it's it's great it's a, it's a very refreshing perspective too because we've always kind of had a similar perspective and when we watch you know I read American Cinematographer and you watch the behind the scenes and they're like 
the camera, you know, we always choose the right camera for the job and, you know, it's a tool. But in that sense, uh, you know, it's a little different because we've always said, you know, what's the best tool for the job? The one that you have available, you know, the one that you can yeah. get, you know, it'll lie, cheat or steal. What, however you get that camera, uh, you know, that's the best one that you can have because it's the one that you have in your hands and can make something with, you know. We were talking a little bit earlier about like hero, uh, the hero camera being used in, you know, Lord of the Rings or something else maybe. Um, but the fact that someone can take a camera like that, a $500 camera and make it look like $20,000 or, you know, compared to a $50,000 rig or something like that says something to the art of cinematography, as opposed to when the reds came out, everyone, including myself, thankfully it didn't happen. We're like, got to get a red, got to have the red. That's the thing. That's the look that's going to make me good. But that's not true, you know, like shoot on your phone if you have it, shoot on your, your you know, whatever else you have, um, because all those skills and that training of your eye and, and the skill and the art that goes into that are going to scale, you know, with yeah. more expensive cameras, but you got to get out there and you got to do it. Well, and production's got to catch up too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people who insist on, well, it's got to be raw. And then, I mean, you show them raw, you show them ProRes and ask them which is which you know and then ask them which one costs six times more in post-production right right but right but they're gonna well it's raw because raw is better and right. we need the best right but oh but we're not paying for the best yeah though. right <laughs> well and i think there's a little bit too that you know with the whole digital revolution of the last i don't know 40 years or 30 years let's let's try to think whenever the first nle came out um that there's this concept of fix it in post and with raw you don't have to have the best lighting or best cinematographer or best you know you can pull a lot of that back and i don't know that editors want to do that um but i wonder if there's a, a little bit of that too that they allow for more error um, i you know i certainly would would rather just let's get it right you know right away right out of the gate with the camera with the lighting with the correct crew and, and, and equipment well and right the when you use the word get it right you know the phrase you're what you're implying is that you had a target to start with that's true which is really important that's true I mean because you can't I mean like I can sit down and set up an interview with anybody and make it look like anything mm -hmm. and there's probably 30 different ways to light it well but am I you know is this lighting for a mobster or is this lighting <laughs> for a you know a, a newborn baby and her mother or like you know what i mean like who is also a mobster probably right well like, yeah. like you're telling a story with every choice you make right you know and that includes the camera to some extent mm -hmm. if you you know if you have the choice of camera then you can choose your camera. but there's so much of that so there's no it's it's dangerous to think like well we're just gonna light it right because well you need to know what right is mm -hmm. and it's not going to be the same for yeah. every, every project and th that's that's a fantastic point uh just you know you, you have to consider the content and consider the goal. Because if you're not doing that, who cares? You know, it's gonna look like everything else. You're not pushing, you know, your, your skill or your art any, certainly not the industry, if you're not constantly thinking about those choices. Yeah. Well, and you're not giving the people who are watching a fun time. And that's the whole point. Like, yeah, yeah. You, there's some sort of, whatever you're doing has to have some sort of emotional resonance or people wouldn't be mm -hmm. paying you to be there or asking you to be there or you wouldn't be there yourself. Mm -hmm. So something is making somebody feel something, whatever the idea is. So, you know, what can you, if the camera slowly pushes in, does that make it better? Does it get you excited about it? Or if the lighting is dramatic, does that make you care more or make mm -hmm. you fear more or whatever that feeling is that you want to evoke, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of times people will look at, especially when people haven't worked with me on set, they'll look at me a little crazy when I'm lighting an interview and they're like, well, it's just an interview. I'm like, yeah, but what's the story? Mm -hmm. Like, right. is this hopeful? Is this an optimistic mm -hmm. interview? Or is, are we interviewing this person kind of at their bottom? Like is this, you know, do we need to, to look forward to more evil? Or like, what, what is this? You know, yeah, and I, ju yeah. I just got to do a bunch of interviews with uh, ex-cons actually this past week. Um, and yeah, everybody looked at me like I was nuts, but ultimately I was really happy with the results. And yeah. I think it's because you know what to do. Like, what's the framing? What's the lighting? When, mm -hmm. when you know what the interview is supposed to feel like at the end. And then they just, do their thing which is tell their story mm -hmm. and it's made better for it yeah do you do you, where do you have to fight that fight or, or do you have to fight that fight with a producer or somebody who you know maybe you're selling selling a style or you know maybe you're selling yourself you know we're, we want to go with you um but you have to convince us why you're the best person for this job 
and you come in with like, you know, well, there's a story that we want to tell and we got to take care of that. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just an interview. You know, where do you, do you fight that? How do you fight that? You, you fight just that work then? very quietly. Do you... <laughs> you don't do any fights at all. You okay. put the key on the side, you want the key. You put the chair where you want the chair. You put the other <laughs> light where you want the other light. And, and then you let them feed back. And usually people don't even give notes on the stuff that, you know, I mean, occasionally somebody will say something that's, that sounds like a lighting and camera department note, like that's too extreme a ratio. But most of the time, they're just like, let's move that boat in the background so that it's pointing the other way. Oh, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they see things that, yeah. that I'm not as drawn to anyway. So. <laughs> you don't care about you. Like, yes, okay. Didn't see it. It's out, it's out of focus. <laughs> you know, It's if, actually not in the frame. If somebody <laughs> sees that. Yeah. <laughs> Cropping that out. They're like, you know what? You're absolutely right. You know, let's let's take five. We're going to we're going to change that. And uh, you can have your two cents into this. shoot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, most of I, that makes me sound really passive aggressive and I'm not. But I think well, you just I, I don't of, think it does. OK, you just sort yeah. of assume that you're there to tell a story and your parts of the job. You just sort of do them. Mm -hmm. And then if I mean, if if a director or if a producer says, no, it's going to be the other way, well, then you do it the other way. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you, I'm going to start with what I think is the best option. Well, What's your, the favorite, you know, your favorite project that you've you've worked on? And um, what was the camera that you, you know, camera and equipment that you used on that? Yeah, you know, get maybe, nerdy. I'm maybe not your favorite because I, I answer that for him. I'm assuming <laughs> it was high neighbor in the fall. <laughs> OK, <laughs> she, Julia's you. Like, let me just your creative you endeavors, maybe separate from work. Any, I'm just kidding. Anytime I can work with Julia, <laughs> it's yes. really. All right, guys, I'm done. Especially that's all on I needed camera. for today. <laughs> He, he didn't qual qualify that, though. He's like, just anytime I can work, anytime with, Julia, I can work with Julia, it's another time that I can work with Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Yes. Okay, yes. sorry. Um, somebody famous always says the next one, right? And I think that's, I mean, if you're, if you're learning stuff, it's always the next one because that means you messed up something last time. So I'm always, um, and thank God I'm to the point where I'm learning a little bit less because for a while, it was sort of tough to be embarrassed by what I did six mm -hmm. months ago. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like, oh, I, I'm so much better now. Yeah. And I still think I'm better every project, but I can, I'm getting to the point where I can be more proud of things that I've done in the past. Um, so yeah, it's really, really hard to pick something. Um, I'm working on a couple of maybes, a couple of different projects up in the air that uh, I'm excited about. All of them are narrative and just sort of probably summer fun time stuff. Um, and uh, if anybody wants to make a like a John Hughes film, let me know because that's like oh on my on gosh, my list. yes. And now that I live in Northern Illinois, like <laughs> really, what did it for me was I'm sitting in the parking lot and I look up and I'm like, wait, that's where Ferris Bueller like yeah, he ran right? down the steps right? into his car. Yeah, like <laughs> that was here, like a, a hundred and some miles from yeah. where we are right now. Like so, that was. Ferris Bueller, Breakfast Club. Uh, 16, candles. 16 candles, yeah. all yeah. of that it great was like 80s. Like watch them if you haven't. Oh my mm -hmm. god, yeah, so that's good. right. Some people are it's young all, enough that it, they wouldn't here. be aware of how good this stuff is. Yeah, you have I to watch like 16 the, candles. So the the pipe dream is to do a John Hughes style film, um, and that would be my first feature. And I don't know if I just DP or if I DP and direct or what that deal is. Oh, but okay. I've kind of got a script coming together, and um, I do have a few friends that might show up for it. So we'll see. Um, but then I'm also working on a short film with uh, Sam Gazelle out of Milwaukee. We're working on uh, um, a <laughs> very digitally, like a, it's a virtual reality driven piece. But, oh, uh, nice. So it's going to be my excuse to experiment with 3D just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Which I think the film festivals will probably <laughs> gag on, mm -hmm. but I don't care. Yeah. Um, because to do 3D for an indie film at all, right. I think, mm -hmm. sort of says, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah, you, and That's you got to cool. talk to Jeff. We we actually we're starting to put ourselves out there uh, for three D work as well because he did a lot of that, but we never really did much of that until one time I was like, "Hey, could you just mock up this thing in three D?" Blah blah blah, and then like within a day he delivered He's this like, like perfect, you know, not perfectly lit, but just stellar, you know, lighting and just the quality of the rent and everything. And I was like, "Holy balls, <laughs> we can do freaking three D now!" So. Uh, Connections. There's that thing there you're you talking go. about when you got like somebody on your team yeah. who just floors you with, like, oh wow, that's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a awesome. skill we didn't know we had. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, are you, you? You're probably familiar with uh, Carlo, Carlo, or Carlos Vinny uh, Bassesi. Yeah. yeah. 
he just came in here for an MCAI event. Nice. Um, and he was just talking about a couple of the pieces that he just did, a couple of the indie pieces. Um, and one of them was, was called The Wheel. The Wheel. Wheel. The Wheel. Yep. Yeah. Have you, you seen that? That's I a, have. Okay. I was going to say that's a fantastic one that, that uh, I don't know if it could provide any inspiration, but the, the motion and the, um, you know, uh, what is that? Miniature cinematography and then the uh, graphics, mm-hmm. you know, just all that integrated with the cinematography was just so well done. That one's worth watching. It's yeah. shocking to think that that's a bunch of people working on a passion project. Yeah. Cause For it's, a year, like on the yeah. weekends and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So since you uh, refused to answer my previous question. <laughs> I dodged those. <laughs> um, you wanted to talk gear. What about, uh, so what? You're like Red Epic Dragon. Uh, and I'm interested because Zeiss. maybe maybe your answer would be less obvious than, than everyone would think. Like, oh, the best thing available. But like, what's your favorite you know, camera and lens and stuff. I'm crazy about the FS7 right now, um, but it's also pretty quirky still. It's gotten a lot better. The mm-hmm. first, the first version of firmware improved a lot of stuff. Um, but then I'm using the adapter from Metabones. Oh the, uh, yeah, speed booster actually. What what's what's the lensing? Is, is that um, the FS7 that you're using the speed booster with? You mean I what's don't know. the mount on the camera? Is it just a PL mount or uh, is the it... camera has an E mount, but then you can adapt. Oh, the that. Sony Sony E. Right. Okay. Because that flange distance is very very small. It just means you can adapt pretty yeah. much anything to it. Right. Um, so we set up. Um, usually it goes out with EF lenses in our shop. Okay. So um, and that's how I'll take it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can put. I mean, Sony's got some native lenses to it. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can put PL on. You can do okay. Nikon. I mean, whatever. You and want. your your Metabone Speed Booster is that for the EF for the Canon? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and probably the best like six hundred bucks I spent last year. Yeah. Like holy cow. Yeah. It's uh, Speed Boosters are like the next thing that's cool and everybody should know about it. Yeah. Yeah, we're shooting. Uh, what is a speed looking, booster? Yeah, look into the ca- <laughs> that camera right there and tell because that's that's shot on on the. Uh, that's a speed boosted micro th- three. <laughs> Micro Four Thirds to uh, EF Speed Booster Sweet. for Metabones. Um, it's really highly technical, and I actually wrote a blog post about it that was published on Filmmaking. That's right. There it is. Oh, maybe I'll, so maybe, I'll take a look at maybe that. Maybe just Google that. I will. Um, but <laughs> one of the things, it basically is an easy way to connect um, a lens that, that looks really good to a camera that maybe wasn't designed to be okay. connected to lenses All that right. nice. And then the Speed Boost... It makes it even better. Makes makes, makes the lenses faster, like faster. stupid fast. M- yes, brighter, like, like double. Perfect. I understand. Brighter, that. brighter. brighter. So, yeah. <laughs> they, they've like come a little closer, to <laughs> and like then yeah. further away. Thank you for translating. <laughs> so, because that's like with the with the speed booster on, you know, with with a one one point two or something, you can get like a point five or something. Because we have like a T one five, which goes down to like T seven or T eight or something. It's a one stop gap. Yeah. So then you have to like put it, put it on your stops calculator because stops aren't yeah. one apart. They're terrible. And the, the difference between an F stop and a T stop and F stop is a theoretical stop. And the T stop is actually accounting for the glass. So wow. if you, we've if, come down to this. If you get a, yeah. if you yeah. see the T versus the F, the T is the actual <laughs> light that's going to get through your transmission. Can I yeah, for transmission? transmission. Yeah. And if Julia, if you're, <laughs> me- if you're messing with these lenses, you should probably not. We've <laughs> died. We've died. My and good freaking luck. Call John. Really great way for you to make more money is to do a workshop I, for oh, newbies. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a whole bunch of them. That's um, a really good idea. And you have a great did, space. What do you guys think? Dude, right? Workshops? You guys are or do you all know what yeah. he's talking about? In Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, wait, you're working in the shop? Why do I want to watch that? I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like you are at the place where... You can sort of identify your style, you know. Like, do you feel like you kind of have a style that you put forward, or are you just discovering it on, on every project? I I think I asked this. Don't um, give him the dodge. Don't give him the dodge. I think Make I asked him, this. Uh, I think I asked this with Jordan. <laughs> you know, like with with lighting, <laughs> um, but you know, like we we can sort of identify the ones that are at the top. We can we can say, well, that's Michael, what Michael Bay does, and that's what, you know. <laughs> I like that you uh, call that the top. Well, <laughs> you call that the top shelf, Speaking like those top, top shelf lights. <laughs> hey. Michael Bay is top shelf. Based on what he's Rusty making top for shelf. a movie, I would, <laughs> I'm just saying, um, whatever. Yeah. But we well, if I'd, success is defined as money. That's which right. It, which it is. Yeah. <laughs> among artists, for I'm sure. Not, very successful in that. <laughs> um, okay. 
anyway, we can identify some of the, you know, we can identify <laughs> these styles. Right, you know? right. And, and you're going to expect, you're going to expect yeah. that. Like, don't let him dodge. On the next, on the next movie that they do, you were going to expect Michael Bay's next movie to look a certain way. Um, would you feel? Do you feel like you're kind of, you're discovering that, or, or are you just kind of coming up with it on each project? Or, I would say I've always had a style. I didn't know that I did. I'm kind of learning what it is or was or has been. Um, and I've also noticed I go through phases, you know, as you mm -hmm. learn something mm -hmm. like, um, I can look at all my old stuff and then there's just like points where like, I just stopped doing that. Like there was a crutch and I just like, I let it go mm -hmm. and I could, I mean, I could probably make some sort of calendar and be like, Oh, I must've made that after like November, 2013, because I just <laughs> didn't do that anymore. Um, but there's some things that I don't know, they're really quantifiable. Um, I also think the real style is not even in what you're doing, but kind of how you do it. You know, the experience that people take away from it. I mean, as I always tell people, you're making two experiences when you're working on a project. You know, and one of them is how do you feel after you shot, but before you've edited, you know. Um, and especially as a cinematographer, like, that's really important to me because if a client or if um, an actor or a director walk away and they're like, they had a good time they'll call me again mm -hmm. even if that movie never gets finished mm -hmm. like i'll still get more work it doesn't have to be good um but um especially people that are new to it they they don't have that expectation or understanding that that it can that how it goes on set isn't necessarily how good it is um so i think i find it's even more important to mm -hmm. make sure that they have a good time that they're comfortable um, that things don't surprise them, you know, like as an example, if you're doing, if I'm doing something tricky, like I had this, uh, this dolly jib focus pull move and I didn't have an assistant camera. This was two weeks ago. Holy smokes. Yeah. So like we're backing up and jibbing out and I'm, I'm trying to run the focus pull and, and we have an actor who's never acted before and it's a single shot for a 30 second commercial. And I just told him like, if you do it right 20 times, I'm probably going to do it right once. Mm -hmm. So if we get to 20 or 25 takes, it is not because of you. Um, and I think it's really important to have that, like, I mean, that's not a style that you see on screen, but I think it's a, really a style of, like, how you shoot mm -hmm. that makes people more comfortable so that when you say take 19 out loud, they're not panicked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's really easy to be... Right terrified i mean take 19 means we missed it up you know like 18 mm -hmm. times right. but but they you know and then if you get it on take 15 then they're happy and so am I. well i think yeah. that that speaks too to the to the work ethic and uh you know our, our good friend tc dewitt has been on uh, sets in la where he's just flabbergasted because it's like people don't want to be there or have a really bad attitude about being mm -hmm. there that's what's awesome about doing it where it's hard to do it because mm. everybody here you know, not everybody, but Wants nearly everybody it loves it. Okay. Yeah. Like you're doing it here, not because it's easy, but because you like where you are mm -hmm. and it's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it can be, a, it's weird because it's just a job in LA. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. well, he's a painter, he's a plumber and he's a gaffer. Yeah. But yeah, here it's like, if you're a gaffer here, it's because you love light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true. it's a different category of people. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's a fantastic thing that I don't, I don't think we've, we've talked about before or, I've thought about much, you know, too, because when I have been more of a just just a cinematographer in the sense of, you know, when we run things like we're all wearing several hats. But, you know, when you can focus on one thing, um, I often, you know, think about the three people that I communicate with, you know, on set out of the 20 people um, and and don't really consider much the attitude I have towards everyone, which is so important, especially on uh, indie pr uh, projects when people are giving their free time and they don't have to be there. Yeah. So instead of, you know, instead of maybe having an attitude because you're doing what you should and somebody else isn't maybe, you know, just try to try to provide some kind of more positive attitude, positive, positive energy into the shoot so that everyone can have a better time instead of you just, you know, getting kind of into your art, which I, I tend to try to not do, but, you know, find myself falling into that. Like, Oh, you know, I just want to worry about these things. Like, take care of your shit and leave me alone, you know? Yeah, the the director should be the one who's, you know, in theory, always in charge mm -hmm. and probably whose mood sort of sets the tone.
but I think being behind the camera as the DP and camera mm-hmm. op, um, you can really, whether you know it or not, whether you recognize it or not, you can really have an impact on the whole mood of the set mm-hmm. because you're like, everyone sees you as like the thing that like is what we're doing. Yeah. So there's that sort of, yeah, there's kind of a gatekeeper ness yeah. to it. Like, cause people will look, you know, directors like, yep, it was good for me. Actors feel great. Producer th- feels great. Look over. I need another one. It's the you know, well, it's, the it's measure. not it gonna work. get made if the camera guy is not like like if the DP is not there, you're not making a movie. So I think it's that's a huge. I mean, hypothetically, you could make it without the producer there or the and then it'd director. be a play without the camera. Right, <laughs> it would be a play. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, it's the I think the the DP sort of the measure of mm-hmm. how all of the technology is going. Yes, yeah, <laughs> the it's camera, like the, the hub lights, of the everything. Did the cats the get hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two thumbs for me. <laughs> but it's about the move. It's like, what, what, the, what are the actors doing in the background? Well, they mm. need to do this. They can't be blocking the light. There's, you know, that's kind of the holder. Seems like of what the DP, because they're the ones looking through the camera. Yeah, and I, I mean, the director, obviously, the DP and the director need to get along. I can't imagine what a set would be like if you had a DP and director that were not getting along. <laughs> Terrible. Right. It would be like? really <laughs> awful. I can't even imagine. I would I've never been lucky. know because I've always gotten along with every director I've <laughs> yes. ever worked with. Uh, please rehire me again. Yes. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved everyone I've yeah. worked with. I yeah. think it's, I, it's, it's, you know, it's also a pro and a con too when there's a lot more people looking at things. Uh, because again, you know, know your role, right? But mm-hmm. we've been uh, for the independent film, the PK, with a lot of people on set, where a lot of people are focusing on a lot of different things. Where somebody says, "Oh, hey, did you notice that? I don't know, that that puppet's pants fell off," and no one else noticed no. but that one person. And because we are a very friendly set, we're like, "Oh, thank you, random person who had." two hours today and decided to show up and help Mm -hmm. you know you're not in a in a role that would necessarily be able to say something like that but because of the environment that we've created you caught something that these six people you know who are watching for that type of thing did not i think there are certain you what i learned from jordan post actually (laughs) um is there's a way where you can say statements like that that it's sort of this inquisitive like non-assuming, mm-hmm. like I know you probably meant for the puppet's pants to fall off. Mm-hmm. I was just curious, and then yeah. you sort yes. of trail off. He's good and about that. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. Um, and he's called me out on some questionable decisions. Yeah. Um, and it's great because on set, you know, there's that whole like there's a everybody's trying to impress everybody, mm-hmm. you know, and I think I'm in that category too. So I like I don't want to look like an idiot in front of anybody, mm-hmm. and so if you're telling me I'm doing it wrong, you better do it in a gentle way right especially right. if i'm you know grumpy <laughs> yeah so <laughs> or you know well you're thinking really hard and you're working really hard and you know you don't want to be told something that no one else has been thinking about constantly like you have even if you're wrong so you know it, it does behoove people to think about that before they say and that we had one one event where we we're getting down to the you know end of the day and we we're you know uh, just doing it over and over and they finally got their shit together and there was just some other camera things and it got close and you know tc the director was like all right uh you know it was great for me how to go for you and and i was like you know we we need one more and he's like oh well we need another one for camera and i was like tc another way to say that is you know one more or you know like <laughs> just pointing that out just I was, I, mm-hmm. we had that conversation take the blame yeah. and he was like he was like great he was you like take the blame yeah. <laughs> honestly as camera guy i don't even mind mm-hmm. i and you kind of let people expect that you get to mess up like everybody else does well you because you get a little bit of mystery back there you're just kind of like <laughs> yeah uh, we just need to go again the, ba- the bearings like, oh, got stuck yeah. like it's just but it's you know technical the chroma sub sampling was for, <laughs> for everyone and like you know i've done that before when <laughs> chroma sub sampling is off <laughs> Uh, brighten it I don't uh, but you know to, to anyone else be like oh you know I notice in my move that I see this little section uh, in the background that doesn't have that green thing you know to the art director you know say it in a way that's not like uh, we need another one for art direction that's wrong you yeah. know there, there's a there's a good way that makes everyone feel good and then the way that doesn't make people feel good and certainly happens and certainly I and everyone should be okay when that happens because no one's trying to be mean. You're just, you know, okay, we need another one for camera. You know, it's not a mean thing to say. But uh, at the end of a long day, you know, it does, it, it's those little things, you know. Oh, uh, it helps out. It's something about the, the <laughs> fact that, you know, like in this industry, 
um, you're, you're coordinating like all these efforts together. You're doing something artistic. You're also doing technical things. You're also doing like physical labor. And then it, it all has to be coordinated. Like it's like doing your job but everybody's watching you like <laughs> sitting there, but over your shoulder. And in order for them to be successful, you have to be successful and it's, you're all mm -hmm. tied in. And I think that's why I, what was occurring to me is like, well, why is this more important than anywhere else? You know, where you, where you work? Well, when you're on a film set, you're not like working, you're not in an office by yourself or for that matter. Like uh, if we're not talking office work, you're not, you know, doing your step of the construction, you know, like mm -hmm. the carpenters are in there and he's kind of in there by himself all day, maybe with some crew, but you're just, you can work and you can kind of relax because you're, there's not everybody like, okay, do you have, you got it ready? And everybody's like waiting on edge, waiting for you to be ready and you to have your stuff together. Um, that's why it's really important to be, you know, to be polite and to have etiquette and then to just, you know, because there's it's hard stuff. Sometimes you're doing something really difficult, and the actor's just nailing their line. But you're just like, this is really hard. What I'm doing right here, I'm trying to get this in focus from there to there. As this is, you know, and yeah. you 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 walked in a different direction. You know, you well, didn't hit your spot. You didn't. You know, and you can't another one for camera. Yeah, you messed up. You <laughs> well, you can't say that. You just say another one for camera, and mm -hmm. you learn. You know, you've got that mark on the floor, and they miss it by six inches near the first time and they miss it by six inches far the second time. And by the third time, you're like, we're just gonna eyeball it. <laughs> and maybe we'll get it. Yeah. And I'm gonna need four instead of one because I'm not always gonna right. hit it. But right. that's, that's how it goes. I mean, I don't expect anybody to act like a robot. It's a blessing, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, when somebody can hit a mark, mm -hmm. especially like micro stuff, like it's like, I need you to raise your hand yeah. four inches and then yeah. do the, like some people can do that. and. I, they should teach that in acting yeah. school because it can save a lot of time. Well, I feel like they do, you know, like, do they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and certainly like, you know, moves like a turn or when you're talking to somebody, is you know, the robot, like stay in <laughs> here. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is my, uh, yep. That's, that's done. Um, <laughs> we'll watch that camera for that. <laughs> Very natural. <laughs> but, uh, but just that thing of, you know, uh, because of everything that we're doing, we have a very, you know, narrow focus. So your turn is not how you would actually turn like this. What? Your turn, wow. you know, is going to be more subtle because this is film. This is not stage. Your turn is going to be like. And I also need you to maintain that space a little. So your head's going to move back, you know. And I feel like when you watch, uh, you watch, uh, I don't know, name any movie, uh, but with professional actors. I'm thinking because somebody mentioned her earlier when we were talking about technology. Oh, this is Max is gone. We're talking about the Ben Hag show. We're talking about her and a lot of that, you know, just a lot of that tight, uh, those tight shots in on him when he's, you know, interacting with this invisible person, um, you know, and he's moving a lot, but the focus, you know, stays where it is and he's staying in that focus. And I feel like that is, you know, that is taught and part of just training and, and knowing where you are and what, what the heck you're supposed to be doing that uh, makes working with paid actors just, a treasure <laughs> awesome well i'm glad to hear they teach that in <laughs> acting school yeah whatever that is they totally do yep uh, i bet tc can do it <laughs> <laughs> yes tc um well we gotta we gotta we're running out of bits we gotta wrap this oh, up no i want you to <laughs> plug like seven I want, minutes or do he, we have eight? he gave us seven minutes about four minutes ago oh geez yeah. so i want you to plug your things no first i'm gonna give you guys a gift oh this what? is it is it a this book is is this the first is it you open it? Because I love learning. Now you've set the this standard is, for yeah. all future guests. That's right. I was hoping Thank then. You, that you're so kind. It's not a standard until it's broadcast, <laughs> so you're going to have to rush it to air. <laughs> and this is not broadcast. Look at that. Oh, look at this. It's got the word mill on it. I love milling, like carpentry and stuff. So it says Milwaukee. That's different. Okay. <laughs> I can't get this open. I feel really dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there a class on unwrapping gifts? Yeah. You haven't oh taken my God. it. They can probably <laughs> hear it's it. It's in acting school, actually. They can probably hear All it, right. but for everyone awesome. listening, Ryan's opening a book right now. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, him a very long time. John was very nice and brought us this this book, this uh, Milwaukee is... Then and Now. Uh, mm. Looks like here we go. It's uh, oh here here. Can oh, you I've heard can you display? I can't Were you yeah. telling us about this book, or was Jordan or? <clears throat> oh no, Jordan was talking about it. Was uh, it at the last time? Yeah. Well, I'm glad it comes. This is awesome. Yeah, because I was I was excited about that. Uh, yeah, about seeing this. I wanted to to.
formalized my invitation for you guys to come visit. Yeah. And I also figured you guys probably have a bunch more coffee tables now that you have your cool new space. Yeah. And we do. So. We don't have a good coffee table book yet, no. and now we can. Look at that. Yeah. That's great. You can plug my the neighboring city. My family's from Milwaukee, so this is exciting. We're going to do our location scout from this book, so I hope it's fairly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> the it's, now part is. But then yeah. it's a little out of date. Yeah, it's <laughs> by design. <laughs> Um, for those listening at home, this is the Milwaukee now and then showing uh, significant architecture and buildings and spots around the city. So uh, it looks like a, it'd be a fantastic book because now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I want to shoot there. I want to shoot there. I want to shoot there. Third word, fire. Like the wheel was shot at a bread and, bed and breakfast. I didn't recognize where it was, mm -hmm. but another uh, Tony Wood uh, guy in Milwaukee was like, oh, it's street. Maybe it's in there. Thank you very much. That was that was a very nice present. Uh, we've never received any, never so it's yet. the best. Well, you have provided the best present number ever. Number one um, <laughs> in order. I want you to plug your things before we run out of time. So give us, where can we find you, your website? Oh, like where can All we right. hire you and pay for you? And uh, JohnKlein.com, spelled the cool way. <laughs> with a K. Yes. And with no H in John. No H, J-O-N-K-L-I-N-E.com. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good jingle. We're going to want to work that up a little bit more be like, dot com. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, the uh, MKE production rental, mm -hmm. uh, the easy address is MKEPR.com. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So you can rent anything to make a movie in Milwaukee in that area. Anything um, you need. Yeah. Cameras, yeah. lenses, lights, uh, other random things, little small things. Clapperboard. Yeah. You want a dry erase marker for your clapperboard, gaff tape. What do you need? Yeah. We got it. <laughs> C-stands, um, chroma subsampling. Yeah. <laughs> you can have all the chromas that you need. All of that. That's right. Subsampled, not sampled. Yeah. Resampled. <laughs> do, you, do you rent a lot of dry erase markers? Or just do, we, just, we just sell them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I haven't rented them yet. Dang do you it, want I was to hoping. rent one? <laughs> I just Four dollars a day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Something smells fishy. Uh, you got back. For those at home who can't smell. Well, thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And, uh, you know, I've certainly learned uh, a lot after talking to you. And uh, hopefully we can do more together and uh, learn more, pick your brain. And we'll definitely have to have you back on. Yes. So thank you for coming. We'll I look forward on. to it. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. Now slam Cheers. it. Well, I'm the only one left drinking? <laughs> well, I, I wanted to get more, but. Uh, okay, now. here we go. I'll go get some more. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I, I, like, I don't know, really. Valley Girl? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah but a, what's a like, state? But a, where am I from? Like, Out west. Uh, yeah. West what state. Coasty? Yeah, but, yeah, but there's a state, state there. West Coast, California. Yes. It's an SNL skit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 These are the worst Donald Duck. Damn it. Ever. <laughs> I just started joking and you were like an old Jewish lady. Like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> what do aardvarks eat if they don't eat ants? Do they just eat bugs? I don't know, but if they ate ants, they would also be anti. <laughs> John's like, actually, that's a common yeah. misconception. Yeah. About yeah. <laughs> My mother is a biologist, so I should be careful. It's like, that's the colloquial use. That's not their actual you know, genus and phyla. I don't know. Those sound like, like scientific words, right? <sighs>